It was a fiery U.S. Senate debate last night in Florida between Republican incumbent Marco Rubio and Democratic Congresswoman Val Demings. They clashed over inflation, abortion rights, immigration, and guns as they challenged each other's records in Congress as well. She's never passed a single bill. She's been in Congress for over half a decade. She's never passed a bill, not PPP, not anything, not a single bill she's passed has ever become law. I'm proud of the fact That's we saved true. millions of jobs. I'm proud of the fact we did it in a bipartisan way. That's not true. I know the senator, look, and, and I'm really disappointed in you, Marco Rubio, because I, don't, I think there was a time when you did not lie in order to win. I don't know what happened to you. You know that is not true. My first term in, this, in the United States House, I passed legislation to help law enforcement officers with mental health programs. Your first term in the Senate, you voted to turn Medicare into, basically to abolish it. You've done nothing, nothing to help address gun violence and get dangerous weapons out of the hands of dangerous people. Florida. After Parkland, after you made promises that you had no intentions on keeping to the parents of Parkland, Florida passed legislation raising the age to have an assault weapon. Our primary responsibility is the safety of Floridians. And Senator, 24 years in elected office and you have not yet risen to that occasion. The truth of the matter is, at the end of the day, that Americans have a Second Amendment right to protect themselves. They have, and, and, and these killers that are out there, if they're intent on killing as they are, they have found multiple ways to get a hold of weapons and cause mass destruction. Every bill I've ever sponsored on abortion, every bill I've ever voted for, has exceptions. Every one of them does. The extremist on abortion in this campaign is Congresswoman Demings. She supports no restrictions, no limitations of any kind. What we know is that the senator supports no exceptions. He can make his mouth say anything today. He's good at that, by the way. What day is it and what is Marco Rubio saying? I've said time and time again, and he knows it, that I support a woman's right to choose up to the time of viability. You know, guys, we focus so much on Georgia and Arizona and Pennsylvania and all those tight races that are going to swing mm -hmm. the Senate. This Florida race oddly has gone a little bit under the radar, but it was clear again last night that Marco Rubio, while leading in the polls, has a fight on his hands and why Congresswoman Demings was on the short list to become Joe Biden's choice to be vice president. Yeah, joining us now, NBC News senior national political reporter Mark Caputo and former chief of staff to the DCCC, Adrienne Elrod. She is a senior aide to Hillary Clinton and Biden presidential campaigns. But Joe mm -hmm. watched the full debate last night yeah. and you really could see the experience that Bell Demings has as a police chief right. um, who's dealt with a lot of characters that might frustrate her. She really had her... She had her facts ready, but she was also ready to confront him with some of the kinds of things the Republican Party has done of late in order to win. Yeah, you know, um, we're going to go uh, to Mark <clears throat> Caputo in a second. Uh, he's obviously a great reporter that covers Florida. So I'm going to just say this myself uh, and, and provide sort of the analysis of what I saw last night. Uh, Marco Rubio uh, most likely will win. It's, it could be a tight race. We'll see how it goes. Uh, Florida has been trending, uh, trending Republican, obviously, strongly in 2020. Um, but uh, Val Demings uh, did, uh, did a very good job last night. And I've, I've got to say, there, there, I, and this is where I, I wish I could ask... <laughs> Mark Caputo this, but he's a reporter, so he can't really answer it. But I, I was getting a lot of phone calls last night from people who were seeing this debate, and they said, this Marco Rubio, like, everybody I talked to said, something happened to him in 2016. Oh, yeah. Like Donald <clears throat> Trump got Donald into Trump his head. Donald Trump happened to him, got into his head, mm -hmm. and he just never recovered. He he seemed off balance last night. He would have pat answers. A frustrated um, little boy. Like, uh, like, you know, uh, Second Amendment right. People have Oof. second. If 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 you take guns away from people, only criminal. It was just these pat answers that you would hear somebody in a middle school debate make, where they were pretending to be in a Senate debate, and he seemed seemed shrill. 
He seemed sophomoric. He seemed sweaty. And I just, I just don't know that he ever recovered from Donald Trump in 2016, beating him as badly as he did in Florida. And I would say one other thing, too. I mean, Marco Rubio was once seen as the future of the Republican Party. There was like a Time magazine cover talking about him being the future of the Republican Party. And what I saw last night was just a shadow of that guy. It was it was to me, it was really jarring how pat, how simple, how sophomoric those answers were, because I don't think he's always been that way. Maybe I'm wrong and people will scream and yell at me on Twitter now about, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. but I don't think he's always been that bad. All right. That's been my that's my opinion. Now let's go to the reporter. Mark Caputo, thanks so much for being with us. It was a fiery debate last night. Uh, break down what, what, what was the news out of it? Uh, I think the news out of it is that Val Demings came to take Marco Rubio to the woodshed, and she did. But at the same time, to your point earlier, is it enough? I'm not sure. If you look at the polling and if you look at the state's <clears throat> voter registration trends and prior election results, uh, as well as just the strength of the Republican Party here, it is still going to be a tough climb for Val Demings. But if a Democrat's going to win statewide this year in Florida, it's probably going to be her. Uh, however, again, this is a really tough environment for Democrats to win in in this state. Uh, one of the things, not to fault debate moderators too much, because it's really the forum and the format of our debates nowadays, but they really actually started to debate. And that's almost like news in and of itself nowadays in debates. Like exactly. Too often there's kind of topic tyranny or the moderator has to hustle people along. And actually, it winds up being kind of a joint interview where the moderator winds up, you know, suppressing a debate when it breaks out because, well, we got to move on. You got 30 seconds and 15 seconds right. of response. And you really saw that exchange during guns and abortion. And I think regardless of whom you supported or who you thought won, it, it was a pretty good exchange. And if, it's an if, Val Demings doesn't win this year. I think what you saw and what you read on Twitter and social media is like Democrats in this state were finally excited again about a candidate. They're like, wow. Yeah. So if she doesn't make it across the finish line this year, I do imagine Val Demings is going to still remain in the mix in future elections.